Due to an abnormally high click-through rate on his last piece of content, Corey has forced Josh back onto the podcast. And today we're flipping the script with a special edition telling you how to be a great client. Well, thanks, Corey, for having me back. I'm excited to be here uh, alongside Taylor. It's been a while. Um, and today we are going to take you through a special edition of Reading Ogilvy on Advertising. This is a book that was written 40 years ago, but is just as relevant today as it was then. And so what I'm going to do is just basically take you through an open letter that David Ogilvy wrote uh, to a client in search of an agency. And so this, you can think about this as uh, three different parts really where you figure out, you build a list of who you want to target, uh, going through and inking the deal with the agency that you choose, and then how do you get the most out of that agency. So, Yeah, so David Ogilvy, Ogilvy and Mather is one of, still today one of the like world's leading um, advertising agencies. Like They've done incredible, incredible work uh, for some of the biggest name brands in the world. Um, and David Ogilvy was their initial founder and one of like the world's greatest copywriters in particular of all time. And he put together this letter that basically is a letter from an agency to somebody looking for a, for, an, for a client looking for an agency and saying, how should you go about the process? How do you create the best relationship between you and a potential agency partner? And as an agency, it resonates so much with us and there's so many truths in here that might seem counterintuitive to the way that one, that we've managed agencies when we were on the brand side and how you may think about it as well. So stick with us, it's a letter, he's gonna read through it, we'll stop in, in between, but man is, this, man is this gold. Cool. Dear sir, sir or madam, if you've decided to hire a new agency, permit me to suggest a simple way to go about it. Don't delegate the selection to a committee of pettifoggers. They usually get it wrong. Do it yourself. Start by leafing through some magazines. Tear out the advertisements you envy and find out which agencies did them. Watch television for three evenings. Make a list of the commercials you envy and find out which agencies did those. You now have a list of agencies. Find out which are working for your competitors and thus unavailable to you. So that's so, what's so important about this is that, so he says, how do you find an agency to work with? It, he, it's, does, it's not go look in the yellow pages in their time or Google it, find work that you love. And I would say find work that you love for a brand of comparable size to yours, right? So it doesn't do you any good if you're a startup to say, oh, that Nike ad is beautiful, right? Because you're not gonna be able to afford somebody. But if you find a brand in a similar space to you, and he says TV ads, but the modern day version is, find a Facebook ad, Find a magazine print ad, find a website you love, and make a list and find out who did that work. Right, and we actually do this internally. We have in our Slack channel, uh, a Slack channel called Awesome Ads, that we will actually just upload ads that we think are, effect are particularly effective to help us shape how we think about how we can be better at what we do every day. Right, and even target, for us it's recruiting in the same way. Like, I want to know if someone is managing an incredible ad account, like, a funny story actually, we actually did this with Peloton. Peloton, I think, is one of the best brands in the world in terms of their Facebook ads. So we went online, found out who worked there, and Josh had a friend yeah. that, that knew someone there, texted her, asking yeah. about one of her employees, and turned out she was her boss. So <laughs> yeah. you gotta be careful. So Carolyn Sussman. Yeah, I, we're sorry, Carolyn, about that. Guys. But you guys are doing rad stuff at Peloton. So, But it's a great way to find out not just who has great theories or ideas or even a cool website, but who is actually doing awesome work that you're looking for. Right, and so he continues. By this time, you have a short list. Meet the head of each agency and his creative director. Make sure the chemistry between you and them is good. Happy marriages fructify, unhappy ones don't. But don't ask to meet the working level people who would be assigned to your account. You might find them congenial, but have no way of judging their talent. Or you might find them repulsive. Some of the most talented people are. A prospective client once passed up an opportunity to hire Ogilvy and Mather because they, because the very able copywriter to whom I introduced him had to whom I introduced him had long hair. Asked to see each agency's six best print ads and six best television commercials. Pick the agency whose campaigns interest you the most. 
So that's, so that's the process then of how do you decide. So now you have a list of agencies, how do you decide who's the best? And I think there's something there that's really important is that the relationship really matters. So you're gonna to talk to this person a lot, right? Specifically your account manager and the head of the agency. Those two people I would say that you need to determine that you wanna be on the phone with a lot and that you guys actually are gonna have a relationship that in his words, fructifies, right? So there has to be a positive relationship. And then the second one he talks about is don't judge the, the people that are gonna be doing the work on their EQ, on their emotional quotient, right? Instead, determine if you like the, the accounts, the people whose responsibility is to interact with you, but don't judge a digital strategist or a developer on their personality, right? <laughs> That's important because I think a lot of times we, we sort of apply these thoughts about people um, that maybe are independent of what we need to do. Right, yeah. And so he continues to talk now about, now that you've chosen the agency, how you pay them. Um, and this is particularly interesting to us. To Josh. To, to me. Yeah. Um, ask what the agency charges. If it's 15%, insist on paying 16%. The extra 1% won't kill you, but it will double the agency's normal profit, and you'll get better service. Whatever you do, don't haggle over the agency's compensation. I know a big corporation which insists that its agencies negotiate terms of business with its purchasing department, as though they were selling office furniture. Would they do this with lawyers and accountants? Insist on a five-year contract. This will delight the agency and protect you from being resigned if one of your competitors ever tries to seduce them with a bigger budget. So, like, this is, so I know this is gonna sound crazy. We're gonna sound biased, we're an agency, but I can't tell you how important this is, right? If you understand an agency business model, and full transparency, agencies run on small margin. It's large human capital with not a lot of overhead. So when, I'm sure it feels like you're paying them a lot of money, but just know that they're doing that to bring great people to your service, right? And so he says, and, and the reality is, is that you know whether it's a phrase like, the squeakiest wheel gets the oil, we are going to allocate our resources against our most valuable client, period. And that's the reality of a service side business. And so what you want to do is to figure out how to ensure you're getting the best from us. Right, and I actually remember being on the brand side. Yes. And I was like, Jeannie, if you're watching, I am so sorry for the way. Right, that Sherry, I Zubin, we're, we're <laughs> sorry to anybody that we've ever had to manage us on the brand side. Right, because I was one of those people, right, that hammered over every billable hour, every dollar. Right, because it, if you think about it, agencies and brands operate in this constant tension typically where the brand wants as much work out of the agency for as little money and the agency wants as much money to do as little work. And so if you think about that, like it puts the, it just creates a constant tension that is, is really difficult sometimes for, for brands and agencies to, to work through. And so if you can be the client that is paying the most amount of money and therefore get, you're going to get the most amount of time and effort and, and hard best, the right. best work so, the best so people. The key is to do the work on the front end to find a great partner and then create a great relationship, right? And the way to do that is not to strain them over their fees, right? They set their fees to make the margin that they need to to run their business. And this is a big thing I was thinking about as I was thinking about this piece is, as an agency, it's my responsibility to care about your business succeeding. But ask yourself, do you care about my business succeeding? Right, which is a really weird question to think about. The reality is that if this relationship is mutually beneficial, if you actually are invested in my business succeeding because, and, and, and vice versa, it's by far and away gonna be a better relationship than if you're hammering to try and pay me as little money as possible. It's exhausting, it'll strain the relationship, the employees won't like working for you, and eventually the relationship will fizzle out. Right. So let's, uh, oh, and then the part about five-year contract. Right, so again, like agencies, the way that they work is we book and hire and scale people against business that we know is gonna exist for a lifetime. And again, we can't allocate our best time, energy, and resources to something that might disappear quickly. So similarly, and, and not only that, it takes time to know a brand. It takes time to get, generate the best results for them. If you're holding them to these really short windows and expecting that they can know your brand, understand the audience, and create great work in such a short time frame, you're gonna be constantly dissatisfied. Develop, just like any great marriage or partnership, over time, you get to know each other better and are able to serve one another better. And that's a truth, I think, uh, in this business as well. Absolutely. 
So he continues, uh, now you have your agency. Are you going to get the best out of them? Clients get the advertising they deserve. I know some Did of you. Read that? So read that one more time. <laughs> uh, now you have your agency. Are you going to get the best out of them? Clients get the advertising they deserve. I know some of you, I know some who are a malediction and others who are an inspiration. Don't keep a dog and bark yourself. That's, what an unbelievable line of copy, right? Like, <laughs> it's so good. And so let me put that in your terms. Don't hire a copywriter and write copy yourself, right? Trust the people that you hired to do an amazing job. Don't criticize a graphic designer when you're not a graphic designer. Trust them and empower them to do amazing work. It's, it's just brilliant. I, uh, don't, so don't keep a dog and bark yourself. Any fool can write a bad advertisement, but it takes a genius to keep his hands off of a good one. I had just finished showing a new campaign to Charlie Kelstadt, the chairman of Sears Roebuck, when his comptroller came into the room, started to read my copy, and took out a fountain pen from his pocket. Put that pen back in your pocket, snapped Kelstad. So, so this is again, the, the, he's giving a story about the CEO or the chairman of Sears Roebuck who has an ability and a respect for the work that a copywriter is doing to not allow a financial person to piss on the art, right? Like he it's almost yeah, laughable that the guy would even say something. Right, but that, with with design, things that people feel are subjective, people love to give opinions, right? And you have to understand that people have dedicated their whole lives to educating themselves and understanding how to do something. And when that's not your sphere of your expertise, and you weigh in, it's really demoralizing. For sure. Uh, once a once a year, give your agency a formal report on its performance. This will serve as an early warning of trouble, which, if ignored, could end badly for all concerned. One of the biggest corporations in the world allows five levels to chew up its advertising. Each level has the power to veto, but only the CEO has the power of final approval. Don't strain your agency's output output through more than two levels. I, yeah, and we've had an opportunity to work with some big companies recently, and I can say that the, generally the larger the company, the more of a problem this becomes, where people aren't empowered to actually make decisions, and people the, the, the approval process removes further and further from the engagement and the connection to the product, and so they're, they don't, they're not looking at it in the same way, and every level moves through a different lens, and it becomes really hard to get great work approved. For sure. Uh, even the best copywriters are pre preternaturally thin-skinned. When you have to reject their work, do it gently and praise them to the skies when they perform well. They are the geese who can lay golden eggs. Inspire them to keep laying. The most inspiring client I've ever had was Ted Moscoso, the economic head of the government of Puerto Rico. The day he hired us, he said to me, before we start advertising, we have to decide what we want Puerto Rico to become. A bridge between Latin America and the United States, an oasis of old Spanish culture, a modern industrial park. We talked all night. On later occasions, whenever I made a suggestion which appealed to his imagination, such as starting a music festival in San Juan, Moscoso would make a note in his pocket diary. Action always followed. Governor Munoz Marin, who was Ted's chief, would have made a good president of the United States. When their party was finally defeated, the new Republican governor moved the advertising to an agency which had handled his campaign in the election. I have never wept so bitterly. And I can't tell you, again, just an incredible point that you as a client have no idea how much you have the ability to impact how our heart and passion and connection to your brand. You have the ability to inspire us to do great work for you when you are kind, when you give feedback that is thoughtful, and when you praise great work. Take the time right now, if you are working with a partner, I guarantee you, you are under praising them for the work that they are doing, and it's only going to affect the output that you get back. So we have some clients, I'm gonna give a shout out to one in particular, and a lot of you are awesome, but Trevor Stocking from Axbat, like you have done an amazing job of inspiring our team with the feedback that you're giving them to let them know that you care about it, that you appreciate the work, that it's meaningful. So take the time to do that, guys. It makes a big difference in how People get beaten down, especially creatives. Their art is so personal to them. So make sure you know that. Give feedback softly and praise when, uh, when you can. Right. And not, not to oversimplify it, but I think maybe the easiest way to think about it is the golden rule of do unto others right. as you would have them do unto you. Right. So It makes a big difference. Uh, great partnerships are incredibly fruitful and difficult ones can be massively straining for all involved. And so. We, we hope to find some amazing clients that put this into practice. Um, take some time and read Old We'll Be on Advertising. Hope this was helpful. Love your feedback.